Hey, arty harmy arties, and today I have something very interesting to show you. Something that I am very excited to show you. Oh yes, it is a giant walking mechanical spider. It's the Mecha Spider 2.0. This time, it actually walks. <laughs> so the last design uh, didn't walk, uh, to be precise, or it couldn't walk by itself, so it had some training wheels. Uh, and as you can see by the massive lack of training wheels, you can see that this one actually can walk. Or, well, once I show you that it walks, you will see that it walks. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna show you that it walks, because that is what you want to see. Uh, so let's start doing that, and it will do a little burnout Looney Tunes thing when it starts off. But then it's going to walk uh, a little bit better. Uh, it has made it all the way over to where this guy is, so I had to delete a bunch of stuff to make that happen. Uh, so let's start by deleting that. Uh, sometimes it just takes one step and then it crashes. And uh, that has only happened once though. Uh, usually it does walk quite a bit of a way until it just fails on itself. And that is my fault, greatly my fault. Because I forgot to reconnect ropes after I copied it. And if you don't know, uh, because you don't own the game or haven't tried it. If you copy, copy a structure that has ropes, the ropes disappears. And you have to reconnect all the ropes again. Uh, so I forgot to do that. And uh, when I connected the ropes, it wasn't in the most optimal position or actually pretty far from the optimal position uh, but it's not possible to redo it uh, <laughs> right now I guess it's it's possible to redo it but it would take I would guess it takes about half an hour to do that uh, because there's just so much you will see very soon if you're interested in the design I will show you that soon uh, once this has just walked a little bit further and you have had your share of f watching experience of this uh, which I think is going to be a bit... Uh, pre pretty soon. You can take a look at the gears. I think you've seen the legs a lot. So just give you another shot. A few moments of that. You can see that I'm using 8 tooth gear. This time as well and not the 4 tooth gear. Because as I said in the uh, gears video. That's more stable. Ah, you can see that it isn't being uh, very happy right now. Ooh, not happy at all. Uh, this is also not an optimal way to <laughs> use uh, the belts. Uh, they work very well in this direction, so uh, horizontal to the gear itself. When you do start going to the front, uh, it's not as good. And it seems like it actually... Did it step down the... Yep, <laughs> it stepped down here. So this is the, <laughs> the moment when we stop uh, the walking. And uh, if you're interested in the explanation of... A little bit how this works and how I built it, then that will be coming soon. And so there we go. There we have the machine itself. You can take, uh, just take a look inside here. There's so much going on. You can, it's, it's very modular, uh, the, the bottom part here. And you'll see why when I tell you how I built it. It's very interesting, very interesting indeed. Uh, so my plan for this was to use vertical legs. So this is a slice of the bottom part. It's just the part with the legs. So on one side they stick up, on the other side they stick down. Uh, so this would be touching the ground and supporting. This one would be up in the air. From the top you can see that both sides are connected to each other on all levels. And the top and the bottom are connected via uh, via belts. It's all there to make it more stable and prevent it from going diagonal. And uh, that will make it be able to support more weight. So that is why this can walk and the last design couldn't walk. Because the last design only used two of these axles latch things. And they were horizontal, so a great loss in weight carrying capacity. Uh, so then I took this, I copied it, and I placed one here. And then I placed one three blocks from that, and then three blocks from that, and continue doing that until I had six pairs of legs. And the reason I chose six legs is because I needed a lot of legs, so there would also 
always be a good amount of legs touching the ground. So I think there will always be at least three legs touching the ground at all times. Most of the time there are more legs touching the ground. And we can start this and take a look. It's not super obvious because they don't do a massive circle. But we can take a perspective from here. You will see that uh, there is there's always a good amount of legs towards the ground in the bottom position or close to the bottom position. And now granted if I add two more, uh, so I would have eight on either side, that would mean that I could always have four legs touching the ground, which would probably be even better. But I decided to stop at six because I didn't want to do the extra rope connecting because it is so <laughs> slow and a little bit boring to do. But I mean, the result was good, so uh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, maybe the next design will use uh, eight legs uh, on either side. Uh, just to get it a little bit better. After I did this, I realized that uh, it, it was a static structure. And I couldn't get it to be a dynamic structure. A dynamic structure will move, a static won't. Uh, so that's the difference. You can see me running into this with all of my might and jumping into it. It doesn't move. It won't move no matter what you do. So I needed to copy it like so and uh, and place it on something to make it a dynamic structure. Uh, so let's cut that out. Once I did that, I needed to connect the rotor to the top because I wouldn't want to make it too heavy on one of the sides. So on the top is the best place where I found a problem that you can't copy paste the rotor by itself. So what I needed to do was uh, after connecting all the ropes again, or almost all the ropes, I forgot to do these one, which arguably are the most important ones. Uh, so after doing that connection, what I did, did was, bra -bra -bra, I did this, placed the rotor on the top, grabbed the entire machine, and let's see if I can find a good way. Okay, let's just paste it like that, and pasted it, of course, centered, uh, but pasted the rotor on the or the entire structure on the rotor. Uh, I dropped it down. This is where I paste, placed the uh, the arc. Uh, so you can see how it's placed there. The same that I did there. So I dropped it down to the ground. Which was my first mistake. Or my second mistake. Uh, my first mistake was not starting from the rotor. <laughs> uh, but the second mistake was forgetting to connect these before dropping it to the ground so some they're not perfectly aligned and I should have done the connections first and then uh, dropped it to the ground so I did that in the wrong order after I did that just built the gears took it only took like one and a half hour or something to find the best gears uh, for this situation needed a low speed and a high torque so something that could handle the torque uh, so this is the result of that design it's a little bit interested interesting uh, you can probably see that it this gear is off centered by one block uh, so it will actually only turn in one direction and if I turn this in the wrong direction and really slowly of course it will lock but if I turn it in the other direction it will work perfectly and even in really slow speeds it will work really nice uh, we have the structure on top here. I've shown you that in the last sign and then I made kind of a counterweight uh, Structure here just to make it look a little bit better as well uh, I don't think the counterweight is enough, but I also think think that being a little front heavy is good for it uh, so that it will uh, <laughs> I Don't know I Tried to make it back heavy and it didn't walk so for some reason it, it was helpful to have this in the front it's probably pretty well balanced right now. Uh, but anyway, that's all I had to say. I can't get it down to the ground. If I could, that would have been awesome. Uh, let, let's try this again just because. Uh, so now. Oh, it worked. It actually worked this time. So this is an all time new for even for me. Oh, look at it. It's so close to tipping over. Don't tip over, my friend. Don't. <laughs> I couldn't stop it. 
Okay, so that is why I can't put it down on the ground. Uh, it's just a little bit of a hill here, and it doesn't handle that too well. Anyway, done with my rambling. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you ha have any suggestion for some mad maddening tech I you want me to create, leave it down in the comment section below. And I shall see you. Hello next time.